Hello everybody, my name is Jason Graziani and welcome to our channel, Leader for Life. Today, instead of doing a leadership topic, we're gonna jump right in and go ahead and score ourselves, whether it's yourself or individuals that you work with, so that you could see how well you're doing as a leader and if there's any holes that you need to work on. Let's go ahead and get started. So each of these 25 questions that I ask has a key right here. And I'm gonna say a sentence and then you're gonna write a zero if you would say, that never describes me. You're gonna write a one if it rarely describes you. You're gonna write a two if it sometimes describes you. You're gonna write a three if it mostly describes you. And then finally, you're gonna write a four where you're very confident about yourself and you say, that always describes me. Now, the caveat for this entire process to work is that you have to be as brutally honest with yourself as possible. And I would recommend asking a partner or somebody else that you work with if they think that that's true. We tend to wear mm, rose-colored glasses when thinking about ourselves, me included, by the way. And so this is a good gauge for you to really be honest with yourself to find some areas where you could improve potentially. Number one, do you have influence? Meaning when you're a part of an organization or a team, are your thoughts, ideas, and actions influencing the others? Write down zero, one, two, three, four. Number two, do you have self-discipline? in the areas of your habits. Maybe it's the way that you get up in the morning, uh, what you do every single day, your daily monitoring activities, how you eat. Whatever you are doing, how disciplined are you when you do it? Zero to, through four. Number three, your track record. This would mean your track record of success. So whatever occupation or field that you're in, or whatever goal you're trying to accomplish, do you have a track record of success in that area? Zero through four. Number four, people skills. How well do you deal with people and how well people like dealing with you? Number five, solution oriented. Do you often come up with solutions for problems? Or are you the type of person that really just gives the problem and kind of wants somebody else to find the solution? We all know that there's problems everywhere, but the leaders are the ones that are thinking about the solution to the problem, not just the problem itself. Number six, doesn't accept the status quo. Now that's a tough one because if everybody around you likes you, you're probably not a leader. There's a difference between being liked and being respected. And you want to be respected, but you're not always going to be liked because leaders are forced, not because they're trying to go against the grain just to be difficult. They're trying to make sure that they stand for something and they will not accept just the way that everybody already does it because sometimes that's not the best way to do it. So a leader has to be willing to kind of push back a little bit, not accept the status quo in order to make a good decision for everybody moving forward. Number seven, seize the bigger picture. Vision. The cliche is you can't see the forest because you were paying attention to the trees. And although that's a cliche, it's a really good example, meaning are you able to take a step back and look at the bigger picture when dealing with one certain situation? Can you still see the bigness of the picture? Go ahead and rate yourself zero to four. Number eight, ability to handle stress. So when the pressure picks up, sometimes people ask themselves, am I better under pressure or worse under pressure? It's not so much whether you're better or worse. I don't know how many people are actually better under pressure. It's more just, can you still operate and maintain under pressure? So when pressure rises, do you fold? Do you run away? Going back to fight, freeze, and flight. If there's pressure, do you fight through the problem? Do you freeze and do nothing? Or do you flight and run away? And go ahead and rate yourself as to whether or not you could handle stress properly. Next, number nine, displaying a positive spirit. So, oh man, in the face of adversity or when something's going on or when people are down or negative or fearful or frustrated or depressed, are you still able to maintain a positive spirit? One thing that I'm working on a lot right now is making sure that the actions and words of others don't change the way I feel and the way I act. It's very difficult to do it, but we're always working to improve and get better because I look at this area for myself as well. And so in this area, displaying a positive spirit, I wanna be positive no matter how anybody around me is acting. Number 10, understands human nature. And human nature means we don't really take things personally. We have to understand the nature of people and that we can't change the nature. People have to decide to change certain courses of their actions, behaviors, the way they think and the way they act. But you, you don't fight it, you understand it, and you're still able to process 
and make decisions as a leader, understanding how human nature works. Number 11, doesn't show personal problems. What that means is not that you don't have personal problems, but when you're leading a group of people, like a pastor at a church, maybe the congregation is showing up to church and they've got issues and problems and they don't really want to hear about the pastor's problems. The pastor is probably going through problems himself or herself, but at the same time, they're not going to spread that and put that into the group just because they're going through something. So how well do you handle your personal problems while still being effective leading a group of other people? Number 12, willingness to take responsibility, taking ownership. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean you're always going to be right. It doesn't mean you're always going to be successful, but that you're willing to take responsibility for your department, for your numbers, for your organization, whether that's in good times or whether it's in bad times, you're willing to take responsibility. Remember, on this left side column, give yourself a zero if it's never, one rarely, two sometimes, three mostly, and four always. Now that we got through our first 12 here on your left, let's go ahead and take a look at the right side. Number 13, open to process issues. Conflict management and processing issues is one of the key components to being a leader and your ability to be open to the processing of the issue. Sometimes somebody doesn't want to know the answer to something. Sometimes as a leader, we have to show that we're open to just processing the issue live with somebody so that they know how to process it themselves as well. Give yourself zero to four on that one. Number 14, know what you stand for. This, I don't think that there's ever been a time in American history where this is more important. Obviously, we know that we have a polarized society. There's a lot of divides socially, economically, politically. And right now, it's more important than ever that people know, what do you stand for? You. Not the person you work with, not your parents, not your kids, not your spouse, not your coworkers, but you. What do you stand for? It's so important for people to know this and that you don't alienate other people's views by standing for something, but you can't fold to your beliefs either to make somebody else more comfortable. So I would say one of, of, of all of these points, this one's really near and dear to my heart. I think it's so important that you know what you stand for because then you become more of a predictable leader and people could know what to expect from you moving forward in the future. Number 15, has integrity. It may sound like, well, yeah, of course, I have integrity. That's, that's, no, but really. Here's how you could define your character. Your character is shown by what you do for people who could do nothing for you. How do you treat people that could do nothing for you will tell you a lot about your character. Again, we don't know. You're the one that knows. Give yourself an honest score there and let's all pick it up in that area. We could all do better. Number 16, strengthen your faith. Sometimes our faith gets tested. Sometimes we even run away from our faith. Sometimes we think that, especially if we're coming off of a victory, we think we're really awesome and that we don't need to work on a lot. And then maybe sometimes after a failure, we believe that, you know, we're not good enough or something. How strong is your faith? Because if you're going to lead a large organization and continues to grow your leadership abilities, your, your faith has to be very strong in whatever you believe in. Next point. Number 17, ability to know your next step. Patrick B. David came out with a book called Your Next Five Moves. It's an excellent book and it talks about knowing what you're doing next. In fact, many of these questions that I got here right now are from the host of Valuetainment, Patrick B. David. These are quizzes that were done to me many times throughout my career and I highly encourage you guys to go follow his content as well. But a leader would have the ability to know what's next. Maybe we're stuck in the mud on this one issue and where are we going next? That will help me know what to do right here, right now. Number 18, accepted as a leader by others. Meaning when you work with different individuals, they know that you're a leader. You don't need to enforce, you don't need to push, you don't need to strong arm people and you don't need to use force. They already accept you as a leader. Just operate, be yourself. You already are a leader because you chose to be one and you've worked on it. Number 19, desire to keep learning. Not just your willingness to do it, or not just your ability to do it, but your desire to keep learning. Many times in my career, I got flat, and then I would grow a little bit, and then I get flat, and then grow a little bit and get flat. And every single time you get flat and you get stuck at a particular area, it's not just that you know that you can grow, you have to have a desire to grow. And it's very difficult when that takes place, but you have to have the desire to keep learning and improving, and that way you can keep sharpening and refining your skill sets as a leader. Number 20, 
manner that draws people. It's one thing to know what you stand for. It's another thing to demonstrate that knowledge and that conviction in a way that attracts other people to follow you. If you're abrasive or if you're too difficult or if you're not the type that draws people into you, you may have convictions and you may even be right, but maybe people don't follow you still because leadership isn't just about being right. It's about engaging other people and the manner in which you conduct yourself will determine how many people will engage with you. Number 21, positive self-image. Listen, you could only, other people can only love you to the degree that you love yourself. And, it's, and sometimes people think like, well, do you think I'm showing too much ego? Do you think I look like I'm, I'm, I'm overly confident? I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be arrogant to people. Totally understand, totally understand. But listen, if you don't have a positive self-image and think you're amazing, think you're wonderful, love yourself, it's gonna be very difficult for other people to think you're wonderful, to think you're amazing, or to love you. So don't apologize for the fact that you have a positive self-image and whatever you need to do to see yourself in a better light, keep working on that because that'll help other people follow you. Number 22, willing to serve others. People have asked me, Jason, what's your definition of leadership? And I've kind of taken a lot of different people and, and kind of merged mine together, but I could tell you if I was to put it down into five words, I would say serve people, treat them right. Serve people, treat them right. So my willingness to serve other people is very difficult because a lot of times when you're the leader, you, just, you think that leadership may just be, I dictate to people, I instruct people, I tell people what to do. Not at all, not at all. Leadership is one of the most humbling forms of service to mankind than you could ever subscribe to. Of anything that you could choose to do on planet Earth, subscribing to leadership is the ultimate sacrifice, I believe, not the ultimate, but one of the ultimate sacrifices you could make because it's purely serving other men and women in society, and, uh, and I highly encourage you to choose to do so. Number 23, bouncing back after an adversity. Oh, they always say it's not, you know, it's not whether you fall, it's whether you get back up. And I love the great Les Brown said, you know, if you could, and when you fall down, you should look up because if you could look up, you could get up. And he says it so eloquently, Les Brown is who it is. You could look it up yourself. But I loved when he said that because it's so true. It's bouncing back when something difficult happens. And it's also speed, making sure it's fast, making sure you bounce back very quickly. Number 24, takes initiative. So there's responding and then there's initiate. So I have initiative or I'm a responder. Most people are responders. When it gets cold, they warm themselves up. When it gets hot, they cool themselves down. When they're hungry, they go find something to eat. When they're thirsty, they find something to drink. Now those are basic human needs, but if you look at the way most people do things, when do we study for our tests? This is a quiz after all. When do we study for our tests? At the last minute. Have you ever studied for a test that wasn't scheduled? Probably not. What you do is you find out when do I have to get it done? Have you ever seen children when the garage door opens and mom and dad are coming home and then the kids are run, scrambling and running around trying to get everything done? Of course, because they're responding to knowing that, shoot, mom's coming home. I got to go finish my stuff. And so in leadership, what does that mean? It means you don't need the actions or the words of other people to take your action. You're the leader, you're taking initiative, you're already taking a step forward and leading the people. And finally, last one guys, number 25, develops other leaders. Obviously one of the best quizzes, even if we took all 25 of these points away and we just asked the last one, how many other leaders have you developed? How many people by being around you are better off or performing better because you're with them and that you're leading them? This will be a great gauge. Hey team, go ahead and add up your scores, zero through four on all 25 points. You'll see a chart here on the top right in blue. If you scored 90 to 100, I'd say you're a pure leader. And again, if you're honest with yourself, if you're scoring 80 to 89, I would say that you should be mentoring people and you probably already are mentoring people. If you're a 70 to 79, you're emerging as a leader. If you're 60 to 69, you're coming up. All right, and if you're left less than 60, I don't want you to try to fix all of these today. Go ahead and pick three or four of them and say these are the things that I'm gonna work on for the next 90 days. It takes about 90 days to build a habit 
And so you could revisit this quiz over and over and over again, being honest with yourself and see where you score. I hope you guys choose to be a leader for life. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We come out with a lot of content that's gonna help you to make better leadership decisions for yourself and to give different trainings. Today was a quiz. Maybe you weren't expecting that. And I hope that you take it seriously because if you take this content seriously, I believe that you'll be a leader for life. Like our video, comment if you need anything in the future, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your year. Take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.